Hey, thank you so much for being a part of our study on the gospel. Look, Rudy, thank you for taking your day off to meet with me. And we're sitting down here with a good cup of your coffee and uh, your hospitality. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to look at Jesus spending a night in prayer before he chose his 12 apostles. And I want to zero in on a night of prayer. So now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray and he spent a night in prayer to God. And when the day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them whom he named apostles. Now, Rudy, have you ever spent a night in prayer? Yes, I have. Not, not many. Uh, Me neither. I fall asleep. Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes when I can't fall asleep, I start praying. Right. And I fall asleep. Right. I mean, because I know that they're kind. Of, but I have spent many hours in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. One one of my friends uh, attended, and I'm not even sure he's still alive, uh, Rudy. But he attended St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. And he called me up one day and he said, would you all come and pray at St. Andrews all night? And so we had a, mainly like our youth group and a couple of other people who came to St. Andrews and spent the night in prayer. And I agree with you, uh, it was hard to stay awake. I, I probably found myself dozing at least once. Uh, and. Uh, I look back on that time and I thought, well, that was memorable. I don't even remember the occasion for it, why we were praying, but I remember where I was, sort of snapshot images in my head of it. And I think, I think it was helpful. You know, when the 24 hour prayer movement was really moving right. around the world, right. and uh, there were quite a few hours in the middle of the night that I would take a couple of hours shift right in those and those were those were quite enlightening yeah i agree and i've done some of that likewise um, so jesus spent the night praying before he called his disciples who then he called apostles so a disciple and and luke makes it very clear who a disciple is a disciple is a follower of jesus and his key word in his gospel is following Jesus. And we'll see this. There's some great stories of people who became his followers. Uh, what is the difference between a disciple and apostles? Well, a disciple is a follower, just like you said. Right. And an apostle is a gifting of the Holy Spirit that very few people uh, are given. Correct. And my estimation is my estimation of the apostle gifting is it's all the giftings put together. Okay. And uh, normally, in, in my estimation again, right. there's only one of them in the world. Right. Uh, because really, uh, they are the second witness to the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, I think Billy Graham, in, in our past age, was the apostle that was in the world. Right. Very nice. Apostle comes from the Greek word apostello, which means sent ones, people who are sent. And so Rudy is taking the, the idea of uh, carrying an office as God's person who has been anointed for, for that work. By the way, Correct. I think that that's a great way to look at it. There is another way that is, has been looked at in, in current days, and that is people who are going sent ones into areas where the gospel has never been proclaimed. So they are the point of the spear that are the point of the plow that's going into this ground that's never been plowed before, bringing the gospel. I'm not, I don't have to choose one way or the other. I can, I can just say it probably it can be both. Uh, I don't see apostle as a title so much as a function. It's something that you do. You were talking more about a title, I would think. I, well, the thing is, the title's not bestowed on you from mankind. This exactly. is bestowed on you from heaven. And, you know, uh, I like your point of the spear understanding of apostleship. Uh, you know, I've never really thought about it in those terms before. Sure. Uh, 
it just seemed singular to me uh, because it just it just sure and sure really opened up my mind to another way to to think about it. Well, well quite frankly what we're just doing very casually is debated <laughs> a lot of people would not like my definition they would prefer his or vice versa let's move on just for another section really quick verse 17 says he came down with them and he stood on a level plain. There was a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And they had come to hear him to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with an unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out of him and he healed all of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is great. So this morning I, as I was praying through this, I just wanted to kind of refresh my mind and pray through this passages uh, it dawned on me that you have interesting an interesting crowd here so you have people from Judea and Jerusalem which are Jewish areas but then you have people from Tyre and Sidon I hope I pronounced that right and that was a largely Gentile area and, and Luke is giving us a marker okay the gospel's going out to all people right uh, there were Jewish uh, acolytes, we'll call right. them, uh, that uh, that were that followed Jewish law, that were not Jewish. Correct. And, uh, there wouldn't be really any reason for them to be there if they didn't believe something was going on. Right. In the area. You got it. And, and then, this really dawned on me. They came to hear him. Every time we read the Gospels and we listen to what Jesus teaches we're going to get into a passage tomorrow which is basically Luke's version of the Beatitudes we are coming to hear Jesus this is your opportunity if you're tuned in to God through the Holy Spirit to hear the voice of Jesus in your life but they all yeah thank God Amen. what a gift but also to be healed and to have their unclean spirits cured. And, and so the Lord who's the same yesterday, today, and forever can be present in our prayer time, in our worship time, while we're going to church, while Rudy and I are sitting here at Frick and Frack, we can sit here and meet with God and he will speak to us, we, he will heal us, he will set us free. Amen. Amen. Wow. You want to you want to have our final prayer, or you got a thought? Sure, I, I I I'll pray our way out. <laughs> pray our way out. There you go, Father. Uh, it's a hard passage to understand, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's clearer than others. Mm -hmm. uh, the Word became flesh, so that we could hear it. Mm -hmm. And Father, uh, we just I just pray for our ears and our hearts to be open to your moving. Yeah. I pray for Bob, I pray for his health, I pray for Tony, Lord, I pray for all the people that are listening uh, to this. Uh, help us, Lord, uh, to see you acting in the, in the world and, and help us to transform that into the way we act as individuals yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.